Okay, what's in here? This is the cafeteria. Yep. <laughs> what's in here? Fork! Olivia, the one who cried all the time, stopped crying completely when all the adults were gone. With no teacher to give her attention and no cleaning lady to scold her. There was no point crying anymore. Poor Olivia. They over here. Do -do -do. Okay, that's all in here. Little tidbit about Olivia. Is this the kitchen over here? No, it's the hallway. Oh, a hallway. This is to the kitchen. Yep. Found the kitchen. Let's see. Here we go. If Miss Martha had disappeared, there wouldn't have there would have been no one to cook. If Clara had disappeared, there would have been no one to tend to our wounds. If Mr. Hoffman had disappeared, there wouldn't there would have been no one to teach us. You can't live life eating snacks all day with no exercise or studying. <coughs> Sorry. If you look at it that way, even the aristocrat club needed adults around. Our world would, was so small. And then we go into Miss Martha's room. There are a couple of letters here. It's a letter from the police. October 20th, 1930. Reply, Mr. Gregory Wilson. Dear ma'am, please forgive the delay in our response. In your letter, you reported suspicious activity on the part of Mr. Gregory Wilson. After investigating the matter, we have come to the following conclusion. There is little to indicate that the said individual is connected to the recent kidnappings. Mr. Wilson is father to a son who closely matches the description in your letter. Therefore, we have determined that there is sufficient, insufficient evidence to warrant further investigation. We appreciate your cooperation in understanding this matter. Anthony Doolittle, Cardigan Police. It's a letter from Martha. October, Nove October November. <laughs> November 24th. Officer Doolittle. My name is Martha Carroll, and I work at the Rose Garden orphanage. In the past month, I have sent six letters to you to your attention, but have yet to receive a response. Have you have my letters reached you? I ask that you please investigate this matter at once for the safety of our children. Yesterday I saw them together again, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson and Wendy, a child at our orphanage. I am very concerned for her safety. The two of them have been acting quite strangely. Oh, it's terribly odd, but strangely, I mean... By strangely, I mean Mr. Wilson walking on all fours and nodding, and Wendy appears to be scolding him. I don't know how to explain it, except that it resembled dog training gone wrong. Ooh, it gives me the shivers just thinking about it. Please come investigate this matter as... The letter ends there. Perhaps if the matter had been addressed publicly, things wouldn't have turned out as they did. Adults are so selfish. Indeed. So Wendy basically trained Gregory to be the stray dog and then brought him to the orphanage where he killed everyone. It's very, very sad. Except for Jennifer. She was the only one who survived. Which was very depressing. Which would traumatize any kids. <laughs> okay. Somebody's playing goo. <laughs> Wash house. I came to this room every day to do laundry. 
the water was so cold and the soap would sting my eyes. But I didn't hate it. Because clean laundry is so refreshing. Okay, I can't open that door. No! Jennifer! Okay. So that's where Jennifer would wash the laundry for the orphanage. All the kids had chores and... Jennifer's was to do the laundry. What's in here? Bathroom. Do, do, do. Jennifer, are you happy now? Considering how bad it was for you back then? That tragedy you wanted to forget? Now that you remember everything, how do you feel? Is the answer inside you? Think carefully, Jennifer. So is she happier now that she remembers? Let's see, is there anything in here? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Doesn't seem to be anything else in here. So we can leave. <laughs> Onward to here. I think this is the classroom. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. I learned many things at this orphanage. The alphabet, words, how to clean and do laundry. But the most important thing I learned was the lesson I received in exchange for my dear friend's life. I finally came to understand myself. My beliefs and the will to stand up to for them. I don't, e I don't want to lose those ever again. So now Jennifer can stand up for herself. Finally. <laughs> the map of this country. That day, that day we flew from England. These memories were buried deep inside of me. The airship. And the accident. Thereafter, the, life of, the story of my life became a tale of misfortune. Even when the others played airship, I couldn't bear to join them. So I was left out. A brat, a know-it-all, an introvert, a crybaby, and an elitist. I know misfortune because I tolerated them all. I thought I was the only grown-up. But we were all still just kids, myself included. But what does it really mean to ever be grown up? Will I ever become one? <laughs> Anything else? On cold winter days, we used to gather here and talk. I, of course, couldn't join in, so I sat off to the side. Even so, it felt so warm. And that's all in this room. Back to the hallway. Oop. Toilet. Let's see if there's anything in here. Once, Susan, Susan started a rumor about voices coming from this room at night. It turned out that it was only the door creaking in the wind. But one night, so but one night, sounds came from the room even with the windows shut. Susan jumped out of her bed and screamed. It was really just a prank by Nicholas and Xavier. From then on, the room was believed to be haunted and was considered off limits. Well, alrighty then. Oh, do we miss any doors in this hallway? 
I think we're almost done. What's the toilet? Nope. So let me open this one. We're almost through, we just have the basement to do. Don't want to go that way. We need to find the river stairway again. <laughs> Strange noises in background. I'm trying to think of where the river stairway is. Is it this way? Did you shush? Hey, <laughs> I'm smart. Now we just have to check the basement. Which is this way. Check the hole, the main hole, and then we can go outside. Oops. Okay, let's go all the way over here. Any no, not over there. Anything this way. Nope. Cell of Remorse. Whoa! <laughs> okay! Checking, 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 checking. Doesn't seem to be anything. There is one thing in this room, and it's right here. You will not get this unless you come down here. Pick it up. Why won't you pick it up? Is it not this room? Maybe I'm tripping. Okay, it's not this room. There's one room down here that has a special ticket that you can only get um, by coming down here. Um, it's in one of these rooms. Cell of Pleasure. Okay, this is the, um, film reel. There's a working film protector here. Any films you have can be played on it. I will go back up in a minute after I've done checking everything. And I will show you the films that I do have. I do not have all of them. I think I just have two or three. Let's check this one. Cell of Bliss. I'm trying to remember if I have it right about the thing. The spooky things. The scary creatures that everyone talked about. They'll come and clean if you don't. Sweeping bad children away like dust. Well, they actually came and attacked me. I knew what they really were, but that wasn't the problem. The real problem was my weak heart. My weakness was what drew them here. <laughs> okay, nothing else in here. I think there's a couple of more cells. Yep, there's two more. Cell of Solitude. One time, Diana was absorbed in deep thought here. She was the prettiest and the most mature of the aristocrats. She wanted so much to be an adult. And yet she was, so, she was also afraid of growing up too fast. And that's all in here. Is that a little note about Diana? I'm trying to think if the thing I'm thinking about is down here yet. I think it's only, it might only be down here when you play it a second time. Cell of Repentance.
So. It's not down here. So I'm going to head back to the filth room. Get the films and show you those. So I'll be back in a jiffy. There are doodles everywhere. No matter how many we cleaned, there would be one more would show up the next day. Okay, here we go. So we're going to use the films. Okay, here's film four or fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> They're essentially cutscenes. <laughs> that's really all they are, just so you know. Um, that's what the 14 films are. I think it's all the 14 um, pre-rendered cutscenes is what it is that you find. Um, so now we go back up. And we'll investigate the rooms in the hall, in the main hall. And then we'll go outside. And finish up. Du -du -du -du. Oh, nope. <laughs> this way. Here we go. This is it. This should be it. This is the kitchen. Crap. <laughs> okay, we're back. Okay, we have returned to the main hall. So we're going to check these rooms. It's a hallway. The women's lavatory. Nothing in here. Whoop, funky shadow. Anything in here? Red bird drawings. A red crayon and a red brooch. A red rose and red blood. Red is the most beautiful color, yet it comes at a price. It was my most favorite color and my most hated color. Huh. In here? Nope. What about here? Anything in the mirrors? Nope. Okay, so we're done with this one. I don't think there are many rooms in this particular hall. Oh, that was the only other room in this hall. So we go back in here. And then we investigate the reception room. I'm gonna drop the film reels, because we don't need those. This is a picture of Mr. Hoffman when he was a young man. He was so proud when he showed it to us. He never caught the one who doodled on it, though. But I know who did. I saw Thomas trying to move the ladder on the day it happened. This is Mr. Hoffman's prized collection of fine dishes. He would sometimes, we would sometimes sneak them out and play house with them in the attic. But that was our little secret. And this is a record player. The record player is brand new. Playing a record will fill the room with sweet music. Basically, the records you find will play there. They're all, it's all the music that you've heard throughout the game, basically. Yep, ba ba. All of us loved red roses. Even the name of the orphanage was befitting of an aristocrat. It wasn't until I swore the oath of the rose that I learned roses have thorns. In here. It was a cold winter night. I had been scolded as usual and called into the headmaster's room. 
I didn't like being scolded, but I didn't mind so much. When it was when it was in front of the fireplace, which was warm and cozy. I think that's it. I think this room is his room. Is the headmaster's room? Yep. Oh, stretch. Okay. So we can leave. And we are done investigating the um, orphanage and getting all her memories. And then we're going to investigate the front entrance. And then we're going to leave. I think there's a couple of things in here. Yeah. We never used umbrellas. On snowy days, we'd go out for snowball fights. On rainy days, we'd go out and play in the rain and get soaking wet. Every time, Xavier would trip and get himself all muddy, and we'd laugh. It was so much fun. One day, Mr. Hoffman suddenly disappeared. Clara and Miss Martha soon followed, leaving me and the orphans, other orphans alone. Well, that's stupid. You don't do that. It's a small locker. But it was just for me. My name was even on it. They made me feel welcome. I was so happy, I'd move my shoes in and out over and over again. I think that's all here, unless it's plant. No. Alright, and then we leave. Open the door. We go out to the front gate. It's Wendy. Don't really think there's anything over here. But we shall check. No, there's nothing over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go talk to Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> well, that was cute. And then we're gonna head out the front gate. But Wendy doesn't want us to leave. There's something around here. The Rose Garden Orphanage. That day, I was escorted from the scene by Officer Doolittle. At first, it was reported that there were no survivors. Then word got out that, miraculously, I had escaped the tragedy. When rumors spread that I was the sole survivor of the horrific airship accident, in which the passengers were all presumed to be dead, the media went into a frenzy. And so the tragic murder of the residents of a rural orphanage was instantly bumped from the front cover of the daily newspaper to an obscure corner. I'm sorry, everyone. You don't deserve to be forgotten. But I'll remember you. Thank you for all the precious memories. Let's talk to Wendy. She's very sad. Jennifer, where are you going? Please, don't leave me. I think that's all she says. But we have to. There's one more place we need to go. Or a couple more. <laughs> Strange Hill. We head down this road. Head down the road. Head down the road. Heading down the road. On the Strange Hill. Heading up, and there you hear a puppy. It's in there, but before we go that way, let's go up here.
There's another thing before we go to see Brown. You remember this from the beginning of the, of the game. We were running down here following the little boy, Joshua. Um, you heard the puppy crying. And you found the shed. That's where Brown is. But there's something up here. At the beginning. Where we started all of this. Takes a while. <laughs> there we go. The bus stop. And there's Gregory. Guys, bus stop. That bus that brought me here. Should I take it the other way? No, that's not right. There's still things I have to do here. Wait for me, Brown. No! I wanted to talk. Stupid. You need to talk to. I think I talked to him. Yep. Hello, little girl. Do you have a story you can share with me? A happy one, that is. Please tell me if you do. My son is waiting. And then we go back. And now we're gonna go f see Brown. Oh my god. Run all the way back. And here we go. We're coming, Brown. Strange Hill East. We're gonna go find Brown. He's in this shed. Oh, it's okay. Please wait for me. I'll I'll be there. Rickety shed. There he is, Puppy Brown. It's okay. There's supposed to be something in here. Um, here. There we go. Going to write down our promise. My dear friend, I never want to lose you again. I'll protect you forever and ever. Everlasting true love, I am yours. Now we're going to put the bucket on the bucket night. And a key fell out. That is the four-leaf clover key that unlocks costumes. Oh, Brown. He's so cute. <coughs> oh, yay. He gives you a collar. Okay. Just wait here. I'll protect you. Forever and ever until I die. And there you go. That is the end of Rule of Rose. Essentially what she means is that she will never forget them ever again, including Brown. And then, oh, this is the credits and the ending song. So I will let you guys watch this. We are finally done with Rule of Rose. Yay! Yay! Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and finish the bouncer next, since I literally just have to do the two-part boss battle and the ending scene and credits, and that's literally all I have to do with that. And then, um, hopefully I can continue Fatal Frame 4. If I still haven't gotten everything sorted out, then I will move on to Kuwan. 
anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and being awesome. And I will see you for the next LP. I will see you for the end of The Bouncer. Blessed be. Love itself is just as innocent as roses in May. I don't not think you can drive it away. Though love itself is just as brief as a candle in the wind. Just like sea alone, but say I am a love suicide, cause love itself is just as brief as a candle. And the wind in this pure white just like Just as innocent as roses in May.